Hello everyone, welcome to today's lesson. In this session, we're going to explore the concepts of absolute pressure and gauge pressure. These are fundamental concepts in fluid mechanics and understanding them is crucial for various applications in engineering and science. And now let us know what is absolute pressure and gauge pressure. So absolute pressure is the total pressure exerted on a system including the atmospheric pressure. It's measured relative to a perfect vacuum, which is considered to have zero pressure. Let us also take note that absolute pressure can never be negative. The absolute pressure can be expressed as absolute pressure is equal to gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. To better understand the equation, let us all look at the right side of the diagram. As you can see, the arrow of the absolute pressure has started at the, at the absolute vacuum passing through the atmospheric pressure all the way through the gauge pressure, which means that the absolute pressure is the sum of the gauge pressure and the atmospheric pressure. Gauge pressure, on the other hand, is the pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure. It can be either positive or negative, often referred to as a vacuum pressure if it's below atmospheric pressure. The gauge pressure can be expressed as gauge pressure is equal to absolute pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. And now we can look at the left side of the diagram as we can see here. The gauge pressure is above the atmospheric pressure and beside it is the absolute pressure. So in order to get the gauge pressure, we have to subtract the absolute pressure and the atmospheric pressure. And with that, we can get the equation gauge pressure is equal to the absolute pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. And now let us solve this problem. Find the gauge and absolute pressures in the balloon and peanut jar assuming the manometer connected to the balloon uses water whereas the manometer connected to the jar contains mercury. Express in units of centimeters of water for the balloon and millimeters of mercury for the jar taking h is equals to 0 0.075 meters for each. So we have a given of h is equals to 0 0.075. Resolving the gauge pressure, we are going to use the formula gauge pressure is equals to density of water times gravity times height. The density of water is 1,000 kg per cubic meter multiplied by the 9.81 meter per second squared gravity times 0 0.075 meter height times 1 over 1,000 to make it kilopascal. And since kilogram meter per second squared over cubic meter is equivalent to newton per square meter, and newton per square meter is equivalent to pascal, by dividing it by 1,000, we can get a unit of kilopascal. But since we have to express the unit into centimeters of water, we will use the conversion above. Since 180 m is equals to 1033.23 centimeters of water and 180 m is also equal to 101.325 kilopascal, then 1033.23 centimeter of water is also equal to 101.325 kilopascal. And by that, we can solve the gauge pressure, which is 7.50 centimeter of water. By solving the absolute pressure, we are going to use the formula absolute pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure minus the gauge pressure. So why is it subtracted the gauge pressure? It is because since the water at the bottom of the manometer is equal, then what we are left is the water at the left side of the manometer. And since the pressure is going upward, the sign will become negative. And now we have one atmospheric pressure multiplied by its conversion to centimeter of water, which is 1033.23 centimeter of water minus 7.50 centimeter of water, which is the gauge pressure. And with that, we can have the absolute pressure, which is 1025.73 centimeter of water. So now it is your turn to solve a problem. It is to test if you really did understand the concept of gauge pressure and absolute pressure. But don't worry, because the correct answer is in the last slide, in order for you to check if your answer is correct. Bye!